Hi, and welcome back to the Grow Old Disgracefully blog. Today we're talking about the disease multiple sclerosis, otherwise known as MS. Um, I have interviewed a lady for this particular article, so I will be referring to my notes on my laptop um, now and then. If you want to read the article, you can see the URL below, and that will contain information about medication and treatments. So recently, the Hollywood actress Selma Blair revealed that she was now diagnosed with MS. And she put on her social media platform, I fall sometimes, I drop things, my memory is foggy and my left side is asking for directions from a broken GPS. But we are doing it and I laugh and I don't know exactly what I will do precisely but I will do my best. Now this was met with um, a great response from her followers. Some saying that they've got friends and family that are suffering from MS and they were diagnosed maybe 20 years ago and they still live a real fantastic life. They work, they have a, a normal everyday life. So it's really good for her to see that encouragement on there. Um, they don't know the true cause for MS. They still cannot pinpoint it completely. There's ongoing tests, as usual, research and studies, and there has been new hope in Australia, but I'll get back to that soon. So I'm gonna look at my notes now about the lady that I interviewed uh, about MS. Um, basically, MS is um, the body's immune system gets attacked uh, as the central nervous system gets attacked and it is a long-lasting disease which affects the brain, the spinal cord, the optic nerves and it can cause problems with vision and balance and muscle control and other body functions. Um, treatments can help um, but it can't cure it, it can stabilise it. Hopefully one day they will find something that can cure it, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Anyway, the lady that I interviewed, um, she found out that she had MS when she was 45. She'd gone to the doctor, seen lots of specialists, and it was the neuro eye specialist that diagnosed her in the end. She was shocked. It was life-changing. The symptoms of the headaches and the loss of vision and the discomfort um, were very difficult to deal with initially, and she does have relapses. So she does go through those moments of terrible discomfort. Um, she went to the optician and it was there that they could see something going wrong. It's really interesting how an optician can tell you a lot about your health from the state of your eyes. So the treatment that she received, she was first put on, um, she was first had a DMT, a disease modifying treatment which was an injection called Rebif uh, three times a week. But she was allergic to the preservatives and was still having relapses. So they then put her on another um, tablet called Tecfidera. And that was twice a day, but she was also allergic to those. She got a terrible rash. She currently has monthly infusions um, of Tysabri, you're gonna to have to read the article, and that has stabilized her condition. In addition to that, she takes vitamin D, another tablet, and epileptic drugs um, for the neurological pain that she's experiencing. I've known this woman for quite a long time, and when she was diagnosed, it was a shock, but she comes from a really loving, supportive family, and she has lots of other challenges as well as the MS. Um, and I'm now gonna talk from an outsider's point of view, uh, looking at a person with MS. And when, when she was diagnosed and I realized that she'd started to have these relapses, it was, it was life-changing on her, but also to start with, she became a slightly different person, understandably, because you're in shock and then you're trying all these different medications that's interfering and messing with your body. And it took a while to get her back again, to get her back to a point where, yes, she was still poorly, but it, it was still that person just going up and down. But I can say initially the shock must have been so much and the treatment must have been so intense that it, it did change them. Um, and it did break my heart. To, to watch that, but between my friends and her family and everybody, we adore her and we run around and we do whatever we can, whenever we can, but she's a very strong person. She still works, um, she still does the cooking, the cleaning, absolutely everything. Um, and right now, she's still quite mobile. She gets exhausted, which is understandable, which is one of the symptoms. Um, so for the future wise, uh, we have to hope that the infusions that she's having every month, that will stabilize stuff 
and stop her from getting any worse. Um, the infusions, I do know they drain her a little bit. She has to go for a couple of hours and just have like a drip. Um, I can tell you that there's lots of groups that you can join, support networks, and when you go for these treatments like the infusions, she gets to meet lots of other people that are suffering and they're all at different stages of their MS, so it's good to, to speak to people like that. So there is a lot of support out there. There's also something called the MS Connection, which is a group, um, and you can find that link on my article on the blog. So, the latest thing is scientists from Australia have made a recent discovery. Um, it's an article that you can find on the NHS website. It was dated the 28th of November, so very recent. And it looked at a new treatment for multiple sclerosis, and it's to do with immune cells called T-cells. Now, the T-cells are trained in a laboratory to target and kill a virus that's in the body, in the body of someone suffering from MS. And then the T cells are introduced back into the patient's bloodstream, I see. So they take away some of the cells from the sufferer, they do treatment with them, and then they put them back into the sufferer's bloodstream. And I think 10 out of 13 patients who completed that treatment reported an improvement in symptoms like the fatigue, the balance, the concentration, the sleep, and the distance to be able to walk. So this is some kind of treatment with immune cells and a virus helping each other. It's it's really, really interesting and it's hope. Any kind of hope is fantastic to hear. So if you want to find out about groups or about the lady that I interviewed, you can. It's all on the blog. And if you are a sufferer out there, talk to people, tell your friends how you feel, don't be ashamed to be tired. Don't worry about having time off work. You know, I know people worry about their jobs and their security, but you can't be good at your job or be a good um, mother or, or a good partner if you're not strong in yourself. So you need to sleep. You can't push, push, push yourself. So do take care. Contact me if you'd like me to ask my friends some questions. And um, yeah, we'll catch up with you soon. Bye.